Hi everyone, let us continue discussing property, plant, and equipment. And for this session, we are focusing only on one type of or one mode of acquisition, and that is exchange. So allow me to share a screen. We'll go to the concept first, then we will solve. The concept is always in the video lecture. We are just reinforcing the concept during our discussion. Okay, so. Okay, so this is acquiring an asset through exchange. That means, therefore, that there is an old asset that is being given up by the entity and in exchange for that old asset, it will receive another asset, whether that asset is similar in nature to the old asset or entirely different. Now, in trying to account for the exchange transaction, the first question that you have to ask is, one, does the transaction have commercial substance? Two, does, the, does any of the fair value of either the asset received or the asset, is any of the fair value of the asset received or the asset given up readily determinable? Okay, so if the exchange transaction has commercial substance, Ibig sabihin, may dating sa kumpanya yung exchange transaction and that the fair value of the asset given up or the asset received is reliably determinable, you are to record the asset received at fair value recognizing the full amount of gain or loss. Now, what fair value are we talking about here? There are two assets involved, either the asset given up or the asset received. So as long as there is one fair value that is sufficient for us to record the asset at fair value and provided further that there is commercial substance. Now, what priority in fair value shall we use? Okay, so give first priority to the fair value of the asset given up. But in giving up the old asset, there may be cash paid. So, pwedeng magbayad kayo if the asset that is to be received has a fair value more than the fair value of the asset given up. Or pwedeng tayo ang tumanggap ng cash. That is, if the fair value of the asset given up is more than the fair value of the asset received. Now, if number one is not determinable, you are to use the fair value of the asset received. Okay, so if in your first question there is no commercial substance, then you are to record the asset received at the carrying amount of the asset given up. Of course, plus cash paid or minus cash received. No gain or loss is recognized. But if there is an indication that there is an impairment, then you are to update first the asset's carrying amount. You have to look for that clause, uh, there is an indication of impairment or the value of the asset may not be recovered fully, then that means that there is an impairment. So before recording the exchange transaction, you have to recognize first the impairment loss. We are just in the first bullet. So if you satisfy the first bullet, proceed to this accounting procedure. Do not use the fair value anymore. You are to record the asset received at the carrying amount of the asset given up, again, plus cash paid or minus cash received. Or even if it has commercial substance, but you do not satisfy the next bullet or the next bullet applies to you, meaning that the fair value of the asset given up and the fair value of the asset received are not reliably determinable. So that means that even if we want to use the fair value, you cannot use the fair value because neither the fair value of the asset given up nor the fair value of the asset received is reliably determinable. That means we have to satisfy ourselves with the carrying amount. Record the asset received, again, at the carrying amount of the asset given up, adjusted for any cash involved. 
So let us uh, try to dig deeper. When is a transaction considered to be having commercial substance? Okay, so an exchange transaction has a commercial substance if letter A, this is taken verbatim from IAS 36, in, uh, from IAS 16, property, plant, and equipment, Letter A, the configuration of the cash flows of the asset received differs from the configuration of the cash flows of the asset transferred. Ano ibig sabihin ng configuration? Configuration is the timing and or amount of the cash benefit. The cash benefit may either be in the form of inflows because of revenue from the asset or cost savings because the asset is able to save, uh, let us say, labor or even overhead. So that is a net cash flow pa rin. That is a cash benefit. So if the timing and the amount of the net cash benefit from the asset received differs substantially from the timing and amount of the net cash benefit from the asset transferred, then the transaction has commercial substance. So kung ang net benefit nila magkaiba at the present value, kasi timing and amount, eh, then there is commercial substance. Or letter B, the entity specific value of the portion entity's operations affected by the transaction is significantly affected, meaning it changes significantly as a result of the exchange. What is entity-specific value? So kapag may dating na iba, na enhance, lumaki yung value ng entity or lumiit yung value ng entity significantly because of the exchange, then the exchange has a commercial substance. So kailan yun liliit? Let us say dati ay... Uh, operator lang kayo ng utility jitneys, but you exchange or utility jitneys, jitneys with buses, and therefore, you are now bus operators. Therefore, expected na tataas ang entity specific value such that the exchange transaction is considered to have commercial substance. Okay, let us apply. Black and white exchange equipment as follows. So this, the first column, the column pertaining to black is the asset previously owned by black. We have equipment amounting with with cost of 800,000. Accumulated depreciation is 450. So the carrying amount is 350,000. That is 800 minus 450. The difference between the carrying amount and the fair value of the asset is an indicated gain or loss. And because the fair value of 300,000 is lower than its carrying amount of 350, that means that there is an indicated loss of 50,000. We go to the books of white. White's equipment has a cost of 1 million. The accumulated depreciation is 675, so the carrying amount is 325. The fair value of this asset to be given up by white is 400,000 because the fair value is more than the carrying amount of 325. Then there is an indicated gain for the difference amounting to 75,000. So is there any cash involved? Uh, provided that the fair value fair values of the two assets are not equal, then there must be cash involved. Block's asset has a fair value of 300,000, but it is to receive an asset from white with a fair value of 400. That means, therefore, that to equalize the transaction, Block will have to pay white 100,000, and white will have to receive from Block 100,000. Okay, so what will therefore be the initial cost that will be assigned to the asset that will be received by black? The asset that will be received by black is the asset that will be given up by white. Therefore, 
What's the fair value of the asset given up? The fair value of the asset given up is 300,000 and Black will have to pay an amount of 100, so 300 plus 100,000. The cost that is assigned to the equipment that will be received is 400,000. Therefore, the entry in the books of Black, debit equipment 400,000, credit equipment old, that is for the asset that is given up, 800,000. When you recognize the asset, of course, you are to recognize also the accumulated depreciation of 450,000. We are paying cash of 100,000. And for the difference between, again, the fair value and the carrying value, so 350 and 300, there is an indicated loss which we shall recognize in full amounting to 50,000. Now we go back to white. Okay, so white's equipment has a cost of 1 million. Its accumulated depreciation is 675. So 1 million minus 675,000. Its carrying amount is 325,000. But its fair value is 400,000. So because fair value is higher, that means that there is an indicated gain of 75,000, which we shall record. And because White's asset is higher, as far as fair value is concerned, is higher than the fair value that will be received from Black, that means, therefore, that we need to receive cash amounting to 100,000. Okay, so... How much, therefore, cost shall we assign to the asset that will be received by white? That will be the fair value of the asset given up, which is 400 minus cash received of 100. So that is 300,000. Your entry, therefore, their bit equipment, the one that is received, 300,000. Credit equipment, the one that was given up at cost, 1 million. Again, they recognize also the accumulated depreciation of 675,000. In addition, we are receiving cash of 100,000. So debit cash, 100,000. And credit gain on exchange of equipment. Again, that is for the difference between the fair value and the carrying amounts of 400 minus 325. There is an indicated gain of 75,000. Okay, we go to the next. The transaction has no commercial substance. Jack and Jill exchange equipment as follows. Assume that the transaction lacks commercial substance. Any other wording from this? Also, if there is a statement in the problem that the entity is specific value does not change as a result of the exchange, that means that is an indication that the transaction lacks commercial substance. Or if, let us say, the configuration of the cash flows from the asset to be exchanged are not significantly different, that means, therefore, that there is no commercial substance. So what is the cost assigned to the asset received? The, fair, uh, the carrying amount of the asset given up. Therefore, let us analyze. In the books of Jack, equipment has a cost of 400. Accumulated depreciation is 190. Carrying amount is 210,000. The fair value is 250. So there is an indicated gain of 40,000. But this gain will not be recorded because the transaction lacks commercial substance. Whereas in the books of Jill, the cost is 500, the accumulated depreciation is 200, carrying amount is 300,000, fair value is lower at 250, there is an indicated loss of 50,000. So hanggat walang sinasabing that there is an impairment loss, this indicated loss will not be 
recorded. Okay, so we go back to the books of Chuck. Okay, so in the books of Chuck, what is our role? If the transaction lacks commercial substance, you are to record the asset received at the carrying amount of the asset given up. And the carrying amount is 210000 Therefore, our entry, debit equipment new, 210000 Credit equipment old, 400000 Debit accumulated depreciation, 190000 In the books of Jill, the carrying amount of the asset given up is 300,000. And therefore, we are to record the asset received at 300,000. Debit equipment new, 300,000. Credit equipment old, 500,000. And cancel also the accumulated depreciation of 200,000. Okay, let us apply in our exercises. Allow me to share. My iPad. Wait lang po ulit. Okay, so we are now solving 2-4 planters company and producers company and an exchange of productive asset. Planters company exchanges a building for producers equipment. The following relevant information is available. You are required to prepare entries to record the exchange in both books. The transaction cannot be considered as lacking commercial substance. Cannot ang sinabi. So that means therefore that it has commercial substance. Even without that statement, judging by the nature of the asset alone, you are exchanging the building with an equipment. That means it is presumable that the entity specific value will significantly change as a result of the exchange transaction. So, the exchange transaction has commercial substance. O sasabihin nyo na naman, walang theory, problem kaagad. Even with a problem, I am now emphasizing the theories. So, dahil magkaiba yung asset, building and equipment, expect na yung configuration sa cash flow sa paggamit ng building ay kaiba sa configuration ng cash flow sa paggamit ng equipment. So sabi ko, kahit wala itong last statement, walang sinabi yung problem, then it is indicated that it has commercial substance. Okay, so what is... Dahil may commercial substance, you are to use fair values. The fair value of the asset exchange, meaning asset given up, is 400, but we are receiving cash of 50. Why are we receiving cash? Because the asset that is given up by planters has a 400,000 fair value. In exchange, it will receive the asset that will be given up by producers amounting to 350,000. Dahil mas malaki yung asset na i-give up niya, that means that planters will have to receive cash of 50,000. So madali lang yan. Equate niyo yung receive sa given. Given up niya is building. Building at fair value, which is 400. 
whereas it is to receive to asset equipment. But the equipment has a fair value of only 350. So hindi equal. That means, therefore, that there must be cash here amounting to 50,000 para mag-equal sila at 400. But the building at carrying amount 900 minus 540 is 360 because the fair value is higher than the carrying amount. That means here that there is an indicated gain amounting to 40,000. So our entry is to debit building, no equipment because we are receiving equipment. So, debit equipment at how much? At fair value of the building, which is 400 minus cash receive of 50. So, that means it's 350. In effect, you are recording the asset received at the fair value of the asset received, which is 350. Pag equal yan equal talaga yung fair value. May cash lang na involved. So again, 350 is the fair value of the asset given up, 400,000 minus cash received, amounting to 50,000. Then you are receiving cash, 50,000. So ito yun, receive nyo. You are giving up building with cost of 900,000 because you are the recognizing the building you are to the recognize also accumulated depreciation building at 540 and credit gain on exchange of building amounting to 40. O pakicheck kung balance na yung entry natin. We have 350 plus 50 plus 540. Therefore, we have a total of 940. We now go to the books of producers. Okay, so in the books of producers, so ganun din. We have received and given up. Okay, so they must be equal. And given up has a fair value. We have fair value amounting to 350. That is for the equipment. Whereas you are to receive an asset that is worth 400 and therefore there must be cash here so cash paid amounting to 50 given up so that means it's paid 50,000 now look at the fair value of the asset given up it's 350 whereas it's carrying amount is 800 minus 320 so its carrying amount is 480,000. So carrying amount here is 480. So because carrying amount is higher than its fair value, that means that there is an indicated loss amounting to 130. And 130,000 is recorded as a loss. Therefore, what will be our entry? We debit what we receive. We debit building. We are recording it at 400. Credit equipment here. At cost, and the cost of the equipment is 800. With the recognized equipment, that means we are to the recognize also the accumulated depreciation equipment for 320. Yeah. 
we are paying cash amounting to 50,000. And for the difference between fair value and carrying amount, debit loss on exchange amounting to 130. Therefore, we have 400 plus 320 plus 130. That is a total of 850. So total credit is also 850. So when you view this recording, please prepare your entries in your notebook. Okay, we go to 2-5. Black Company and Berry Company had an exchange of productive assets. Black exchange a piece of equipment for Berry's equipment. The following relevant information is available. You are required to prepare journal entries to record the exchange in both books. The exchange lacks commercial substance lock so that means it has no commercial substance so if there is no commercial substance that means that what is important is not the fair value but what is important is the carrying value so 900 minus 540 that is 360 so this one is 360000 Whereas 800 minus 320, we have 480,000. Okay, so how do we determine whether there is cash involved? So compare this. The asset that is given up by Black has a fair value of 400. The asset that is given up by Berry has a fair value of 350. And because Black's asset, has a fair value higher than the one from Berries, that means that Black will have to receive 50,000 cash. So what will be the cost that is assigned on Black's asset received? That is equal to carrying value of asset given up minus cash received. So carrying value of the asset given up is again 360 minus cash received of 50,000. So the transaction will recognize the asset received at 310. Therefore, the entry in the books of block debit asset, let us say equipment. So debit equipment, 310, debit cash for the amount of cash received, 50, credit equipment old at 900. Debit accumulated depreciation equipment for 540. Or oh, check whether it's balanced already. So 310 plus 50 plus 540, that's 900. So we have a balance entry. Whereas in the books of Berry, the asset will have to be recorded at the carrying value of the asset given up, and that is 480. And Barry will have to pay 50,000 plus cash paid, amounting to 50. Therefore, total is 530. So what's the entry in the books of Barry? That is to debit equipment, how much? That is 530. Credit equipment, the old one, at 800,000. Credit cash, amounting to 50. 
and debit accumulated depreciation equipment for 320. So do we have a balance entry? 530 plus 320 is 850. So that's your simple entry. And to the sixth, the last for this set. About these four warders, exchange a number of used trucks plus cash for a piece of land that will be used at its parking lot and terminal. The following information is available for the trucks. Cost is 12.8. Accumulated depreciation is 4.4. 4. So 12.8 minus 4.4. 4. The carrying value is eight million four hundred thousand. The purchasing agent of Abatis Forwarders has had previous dealings in the second-hand markets, and has indicated that the truck's fair value at this date is ten million. So fair value is ten million. In addition, the company must pay three forty thousand cash for the land. So, in addition to the trucks that will be given up, there will be three forty thousand cash. So, what will be the cost of the land? That is the fair value of the truck. Makai by sila. So that means there is commercial substance. Fair value of the trucks is ten million plus cash paid. Amounting to three forty thousand, so that is ten million three forty. So is there an indicated gain? Yes, there is. That is the excess of fair value over carrying amount of eight million four hundred. Which is one million six hundred. So how do we record now? We debit land. Ten million three forty thousand credit trucks at cost twelve million eight hundred debit accumulated depreciation trucks amounting to four million four hundred credit cash for the amount of cash paid. 340 and for the difference between fair value and carrying value credit gain on exchange of trucks amounting to 16 again check whether your entry is balanced you have 10 340 plus 44 4. okay minus 16 minus 12 8 Okay, so that means our entry is balanced. So this is your entry to record the transaction. I am posing for you to understand the entries, comprehend In 2007, business processing traded its use equipment for a new model. The old machine had a carrying Amount of 32,000, original cost of 48. So that means, therefore, that 48 minus 32, the accumulated depreciation is 16. And a fair value of 24. It was exchanged for a new model that had a list price of 64. A trade-in allowance of 33 was agreed upon 
on the old machine. Okay, so list price is not a good indicator of fair value. Trade-in allowance is also a, not a good indicator of the fair value. We already have a fair value of 24,000. So that means that that is sufficient for us to record the transaction. Because this is new model, that means that the configuration of the new model, configuration of the cash flow of the new model and the old model will be different. Therefore, what will be, there is no So there is trade in allowance of 33,000. So the list price will only be used to determine how much cash will be paid. So we have list price dun lang ang gamit niya of 64 minus trade in allowance. So, ang nakalista, 64, binigyan ng value, kunwaring value lang yun, nung katrade-in nila, amounting to 33. So, the difference there is cash paid. Actually, manipulated yan ang seller. Kunwari lang yan, parang sa Green Hills, pag nagtitrade kayo ng uh, cellphone, Binibigyan kayo ng trade-in value but that is not the fair value. Ang hinahabol lang nila is cash to be received from you. And therefore, this is the case in this problem. They gave you a list price which may, may not be uh, the real fair value. They gave your old equipment a trade-in allowance which may not only which may not be the fair value for you to arrive at the amount you are going to pay amounting to 31,000 and therefore what will be the cost of the asset the cost will be the fair value of the old what is the fair value of the old which is 24 plus cash paid amounting to 31 therefore we have a total of 55 Okay, so what is our entry? Dito na lang sa taas po. Your entry, debit equipment. $55,000. Credit equipment old. At cost, $48,000. Debit accumulated depreciation equipment amounting to 16,000 as we computed. Credit cash for the amount of cash to be paid as we computed the difference between trade in allowance. So that's 31,000. And credit, what do we have? Do we have a gain or a loss? The fair value, fair value of the old equipment is 24,000. Carrying value is 32. And therefore, we have a loss mounting to 8,000. Tama ba yan? 32. Minus 24, that's 8. We debit, therefore, loss on exchange of equipment amounting to 8. Okay, so tingnan kong balance. We have 55 plus 16 plus 8. Therefore, that's 79, which is equal to 48. Plus 31,000. Okay, so that's your entry.
Okay, we now go to the last result uh, involving exchange. Assume the following situations involving non-monetary exchanges. King Company exchanges an automobile with a carrying value of 140 with Queen incorporated for a tooling machine with fair value of 170. So asset received has a fair value of 170. No cash is involved in the transaction and the fair value of the automobile is not readily determinable. So if there is no cash involved, that means therefore that the fair value of the asset given up is also 170. This is presumed because an exchange transaction is presumed to be fair. Okay, so therefore... Your entry is to debit, so letter A, tooling machine or equipment amounting to 170,000 credit automobile cost is not given, so at carrying value. Accumulated depreciation is also not given. 140. So because fair value is 170 as derived here, the balancing figure in the equation because the exchange transaction is presumed to be fair. So they must be equal. Whereas carrying value is only 140. That means, therefore, that we need to record again amounting to 30,000. So credit gain on exchange of automobile amounting to 30. And then letter B. Princess Company exchange a machine for a technologically newer model. Data pertaining to the old machine follows. Cost is 850. Accumulated depreciation is 340. So therefore, the carrying value, again, that is 850 minus 340. The carrying value is 510,000. Princess Company paid eight eighty thousand to complete the transaction. Okay, so there is cash paid. So what is our equation? Asset received must be equal to the asset given up. There are two assets given up as indicated here. We have cash being paid at eight eighty. Whereas the fair value of the machine received is one million two hundred. Okay, so this one is one million two hundred. That means that the machine, which is also an equipment has a fair value, extract this, that's 1,200,000 minus 880. So this one will have to be extracted. So this is a derived fair value, which is 560. Its carrying value is 850,510 as we computed. 510 and therefore there is a gain amounting to 50,000. Okay, the asset received has a fair value of 1,2. We are paying cash of 880. That means that the fair value of the old machine is 560. Its carrying value is 510 and therefore we will record again amounting to 50,000. Our entry is to debit equipment. A machine is an equipment also. 
amounting to 1 million 200 that is for the new one credit equipment old at cost and the cost of the old equipment is 850 debit accumulated depreciation for the old equipment we are the recognizing 340 then go to your equation you are paying cash amounting to 880,000 and for the excess of the fair value over the carrying value credit gain an exchange of equipment amounting to 50. Okay, so do we have balance bayan? You have one, two, plus three, forty, minus fifty. Minus eight fifty. We have what's that six forty? Okay, again. So the equipment old, we have 850 minus 340, we have 510, carrying value is 560, you have a gain of 50. So this is 1, 2 plus 340 minus 50 minus 850. Anong nawawala sa atin? 880. 240. Again. Again, let us go back. Something is wrong with me. So, Princess Company Exchange Machine for a technologically newer model data pertaining to the old machine follows. Cost is 850. So, we are crediting the old machine at 850. Accumulated depreciation is 340. So debit accumulated depreciation, 340. The fair value of the machine received is 1,200,000. So this one is 1,200,000. And Princess paid 880,000 cash. So you are to credit cash amounting to 880 so 1,200,000 minus 880 mali pala ang aking 1,200,000 minus 880 that means therefore that this one sorry about it the fair value is only this one is derived 320 ulit. 1 million 200 minus 880 is 320. Therefore, this is a derived amount. Its carrying value is correct, 510. So 320 minus 510. That means, therefore, that there is a loss amounting to 190. Okay, so therefore, let us change. Debit, loss, on exchange. So you see, pag di kayo nagpa-practice. Hindi nyo alam po saan babalik. So again, let us check the entries now. We have 1, 2, plus 3, 40, plus 1, 90. Minus 850. Okay, we have 880. So we now have a balance entry. Again, we go back. Therefore, the asset given up 
R, cash, and machine whose fair value cannot be determined. But the fair value of the asset received is given at 1, 2, and therefore deducting 80,000 80, cash from the asset received, we have the fair value of the machine amounting to 320,000. Why is it that we use this equation? Because we assume that always the exchange transaction is a fair exchange. So if the fair values are not equal, that means that there must be cash involved. But the carrying value is 510,000, which is the difference between cost of 850 and accumulated depreciation of 340. And because carrying value is lower than the fair value, there is an indicated loss of 190. Hence, our entry is to debit equipment, 1,200,000. Debit accumulated depreciation equipment, 340. Debit loss on exchange amounting to 190,000. Credit equipment at cost, 850,000. And credit cash, 880,000. Okay, so I'll be enter entertaining your questions during synchronous session. Okay, go back to this a lesson repeatedly until you comprehend, you're able to comprehend. Okay, bye for now. And I will...